Man, I'm so ready for the spring or warmer weather. I mean, we're already in those spring temperatures now, and I actually think our last frost date was middle of March. Well, I think it was on my birthday. Typically, it's always on my birthday or right around there, the last frost. And yeah, I'm just tired of the cold. I'm just tired of rainy weather. I'm tired of like, I want the sun and I want some warmth, but you'll hear, hear me like complain again as we get into May and towards the end of May. And I'm like, oh my God, make it stop because it gets just so hot here. Uh, it's the humidity though. It could just like, especially when you're working all day outside, like in the South, there is nothing quite like that humidity that when you're going in at the very end of working, like to feel just nasty, just really, really gross. I wanted to talk about, before I get changed, I'm actually about to go plant some roses. <laughs> some other annuals that I'm selling and just, I just taken a few different things and um, I kind of want to re, oh, and a camellia, I'm pulling up a camellia to give that, there. but um, to uh, plant it, my grandmother's for her and my aunt. I don't know, they don't really, I mean, they have their own garden and they, they really appreciate that stuff though. So I'm going to do that so they don't have to do the work and hopefully it can just look nice. And I'm over there every like week or two anyway. So I'll be able to like make it stay looking good or whatever throughout the summer. These being more like late spring, summer flowering things because they're really, they're, I mean, they're, they're older, you know, so especially my grandmother, she cannot, she's, she cannot go out there and do this kind of stuff. Sorry, I just woke up. In this video, I just wanted to talk about real quick. I filmed the other day, I showed one smaller bed that I have in my garden in my inner ring of the stock that I have. I also showed the sweet pea. I don't, and those are on the trellises. I don't think um, I showed the, I took video of my freesia. Those are in containers. The ones in containers are doing well. Even when I didn't cover them, like they were doing fine. The thing is for freesia here in zone eight, you can plant that in ground in the fall and it's not gonna die. The temperatures are just not gonna kill a freesia in ground. The problem you have is when once that, those first sprouts come up, those green sprouts come up, it is from that point forward, you wanna pay attention to frost because very light frosts aren't gonna damage it to like you might see some but you know something that gets below 32 degrees at night i well below 30 degrees if it starts getting into the the mid to low 20s that's when you're gonna see real damage on freesia um, foliage and the ones i had planted in ground had already come up and they had already been some dieback from this over the winter i mean they it's frustrating here because even in our winter i mean there can be days we had a heat wave in the middle of our winter it was like early winter or whatever and it was like it was like spring it was crazy and i was so frustrated it was like two weeks and all the freesia and a lot of things actually had come up it was actually around the time i had um did the uh hyacinth propagating or scooping video and it was really frustrating and a lot of things were just starting to come up anyway and the freesia were coming up out of the ground that I, I planted them around my peonies. And uh, there's nothing I can really do about that. Now I could have gone in and covered them every day, like taken like, you could take something like a plastic cup really and put it over them every night. That's gonna provide minimal protection, but doing something like that might have, you know, kept them all vibrant and green and, but 
it is um once they're above ground like that and there there's dieback i mean you really do you lose them for the most part because the bulbs aren't going to die obviously you can leave the bulbs there and they'll bloom for you next year but you did lose the flowers for this season so yeah freesia is the one thing in this video that i wanted to talk about that i wasn't really sure about i mean like you can have freesia in zone 8 plant it outside in ground and have it and it'll be great you just really have to you know, understand what I just told you and that, you know, once that those, those sprouts come up and there's foliage that you, they need to be protected or else you'll lose them. But if you have them in containers anyway, it doesn't matter because you have the ability to protect those a lot easier. So this video though, I want to talk about stock and sweet pea. I was watching another YouTube channel and she's a gardener. I forgot the name of their channel. Um, but she was just talking about, um, how she didn't get to have stock. And obviously she's in a different zone. It's like zone six or seven. I just remember feeling so bad. I was like, man, that sucks. I know how that feels, but, uh, you know, she didn't get to have any of her stock outside. And um, it's because it's just too cold there for something like that to be grown outside in the fall. Like, I'm assuming in zone six or something, like, you would have to, you know, plant that however many weeks indoors before your last frost and then harden them off and move them outside. I So four years ago... <laughs> I initially grew sweet pea and I failed. And then the next year I grew sweet pea and I failed. And I didn't get to have sweet pea for like more than two years. It was almost three years. I was so frustrated. Um, and by the way, I am sorry, I take that back. It was three years. It was, it'll be about four years now. I didn't get to have it because last year, finally, I um, had like two or three little flowers here and there. So I failed technically three growing seasons in a row. And you would have think I would have learned well before then how to do this i finally got so frustrated and the reason that i kept failing and i wasn't doing what you're supposed to do in this zone is because we still get really cold winters like we do like it gets cold like not freezing don't get me wrong i lived in rochester new york for a few months in my mid-20s and i will never forget the misery of that experience and especially you know pertaining to the weather and just i was there in February, January, February, and March. So it was the winter that I was there, but I will just never forget just how it was like another world to me. I remember, and I just couldn't understand why anyone in their right mind would want to live in a place like that. Um, cause it was like a, a never ending blizzard. It was a never ending blizzard. You'd be lucky on mornings to get like negative 15 degrees or whatever, like kids standing out at bus stops in negative 15 degrees, like, like it's nothing, their ice on their breath. Like, and I'm in the car looking at this, just like, what, like, planet am I on? Get me out of here now. And so, yeah, I, I will never, ever go back to a place like that. Um, that's just not for me. I'm just not, the North isn't for me. Aridity is not for me. I really love the South and this zone and where I'm at, and I don't want to be somewhere else. So, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'll never forget seeing, I think it was like, I don't know if it was Lake Superior, whichever lake is there, like in Rochester, like I forgot. It's one of those great lakes, I think. My friend, my roommate who took me up there at like one in the morning to the shore of one of these lakes in the winter. And and it, the reason he took me is because of how like, you know, spellbinding it was. It was just, it was breathtaking, like, because it was, it was a lake. It was a great lake, like it looked like an ocean but it was entirely frozen. And you could walk out into it. You could walk out into the, and just never stop walking. It was just, it was a kind of expanse, a frozen expanse, I'll never forget. Like with that look, it felt like you were on Pluto or something. It was weird. Yeah, I'll never, I mean, yeah, there were some cool things about it, but like, you know, I would never go back to that. But we still do get some cold winters here. And I um, was just very afraid to plant sweet pea. I was very afraid to plant, um, stock or like when i started growing stock i was afraid to plant that in the fall too I, anything that kind of freesia anything that is like um on the line here for those kind of things amaryllis paper whites i was just nervous about i finally know better now i know now that those things they don't just survive but they thrive being planted in the fall and ground here so this past october i planted this sweet pea and this stock all you have to do is just you sow them from seed indoors in like October and wait a month and around late November, early just anywhere from like 
mid-November to mid-December, really, you can bring it out into the garden, harden it off. Those temperatures are still not quite cold, cold enough, even from even getting into December. And it's just gonna take very well. It'll harden off easily, really. I found like that time of the year and then this time of the year, you really don't even need to harden off. I mean, so much of the temperatures can reflect what you're getting indoors anyway. I brought it outside at the perfect time, at the perfect size, and it just overwintered. And I didn't even have anything mulched. I didn't mulch anything. And um, I never once covered any of them over winter. The only time I actually just covered them was this cold snap we had a, a week ago. But obviously it's it's about spring now and they're pretty big. And so I wanted to be careful, especially because the seedlings are a lot more tolerant of that kind of thing than older plants. But and you can see in this video, like the, that they look incredible. And even the beginning of that stock bed is going to come up and look as great as the end of it. I mean, it, it for some reason, I'm having some weird growth happening with a lot of like tulips and stuff as far as like sides of things coming up quicker than the other and it's weird i think that has a lot more to do with light and temperature at those places yeah this the stock i'm i planted a bunch of lollipop tulips too like 50 lollipop tulips with the stock so all all along through there and then i have three different really nice sweet peas growing along those trellises i was going to use one per trellis because it's three trellises and three types of sweet pea but I decided, I remember, I think it was um, when I was transplanting it in like December or November, I was like, um, you know what? I don't feel like doing that. I don't know why. I wanted to see them all tangled together and mingling all the three of those types. I couldn't tell you this doc. This, the sweet pea, I'm growing Route 66, Turquoise Lagoon, and Molly Rillstone or Molly Rylestone, I think. The stock, I'm growing five types of really nice stock too. And it's uh, all shades of like uh, pink, I think. A variety of shades of pinks. Don't ask me why I decided to do that. I just did. When I was buying the seed, that's what I saw that I wanted. I don't even know if I can remember one name of any of those. Cat's Apricot is one. Um, Quartet Rainbow is another. Um, I don't remember the other three. I'd have to look. As a matter of fact, the, the Quartet Rainbow is the first one that's about to be blooming. So, and it should be blooming at the same time as those tulips. I'm so thrilled about this stock. I'm just so, so happy. I love stock so much, like so, so much. That's why I have so many. And by the way, if that's not enough, I have like 20 or 30 other stock uh, seedlings that I'm gonna be planting soon. They're the Those are the iron blue and iron yellow. Um, that look beautiful and I'm just very very I so I have like a million stock flowers that I'm gonna have nice stock and then I'm finally going to have sweet pea finally I had freesia last year actually because I failed those first two years I think I had failed on freesia but then finally last season I just bought a bunch of freesia and planted it and I was happy that I had them next year I would really like to have a lot of freesia um freesia is something that I really really love a lot all three of these freesia sweet pea and stock I'm I really, really love them a lot. I mean, these are very fragrant flowers, um, beautiful flowers, showy flowers. Like, I can't, when I found out about stock, I remember being really shocked at like how it's not that popular. I mean, well, I don't know. It, I, it's not any near as popular as something like Dianthus, where like everyone grows, you know, and I get it. I love Dianthus, um, Sweet William, Pinks, Carnations, but a stock is really incredible too and it's got a very similar scent actually to dianthus it's a it's kind of got that spicy clove kind of scent to it and but they're actually a lot more showy i think than dianthus um so yeah it's just weird to me that people don't more people don't grow that i guess but maybe that's changing i don't know anyway so yeah if you're in a similar place that I, as, as me and you're growing these things i mean wait and you're a beginner don't waste your time experiment I mean, yeah do your own experiments and fail yourself you know i don't want to do that for you that's for damn sure <laughs> no i i do want you to i do want people to make their own mistakes that's how you learn but um i don't know if the, there was like a beginning gardener who was like he was like i'm gonna i really want sweet pea and i'm in zone eight and i'm where you live in i'm gonna wait until spring and then sow them maybe like in february and then plant them out in like march and that's how I'm gonna do it, you know. I would be like, stop. Be like, no, you, you, you know, uh, or you know, I'd, 
if it was early enough, I would say it was fall, I would tell them to put that in the ground outside. You know, you could, oh yeah, and you could direct seed too. I mean, but I would just tell them to start it in, in like October. I would think September, by the way, is a bit too early. October is going to be the earliest. You can really do that here. Because I found that was another thing that frustrated me because my first years, I did actually plant things and bring them out in September, September, early October. And I just remember they would get by the by no late November, December, they were mature plants. And it was really confusing to me what I had done wrong, like because then over winter, like they a lot of them don't survive or they just don't look good. They they look by the end of the winter, they're gonna look really, really bad. You need to time it perfectly so that they're not like tiny little seedlings this big, but they're also not mature plants. They really need to be seedlings that are like if it's a sweet pea seedling in late November to mid December, you're transplanting that outside in the garden. You don't want that to be more than three or four inches in length, if that like two to four inches in length. That's a, and and for the stock, those were like this big, like the, the the seedlings that I planted out. You really do want them that big at that time because by the time we got into late January where winter temperatures really had kicked in, they had grown big enough, but not too big to just still be like baby plants, but not quite seedlings and just handle the temperatures and nothing is damaged the whole winter. And now they look perfect. So it really does. There is like a window of time that this has to be done, I feel like. And so it's really the month of October in zone eight, at least in the Southeast, those things you plant them indoors and then transplant them outdoors the next month. You like wait a, wait a few weeks indoors with them, letting them get a little bigger. Anyway, hopefully that helps you know how to do that. And yeah, I gotta get some stuff done right now. I'm get dressed. Thanks for watching.